Hi, and welcome to this early preview of our brand new online cardiac ultrasound simulator um, by online. I mean, it's on our website at ape.ca slash project slash simulator, and it's freely available to anybody that uh, wishes to use it. The simulator has been completely built in Unity um, with just using some custom assets and meshes that are patient specific and segmented from patient CT. As you can see here, here's the simulator. It runs on WebGL. Uh, it is not mobile compatible at the moment, um, but it will run any modern browser, so Chrome, Firefox, um, Microsoft Edge, and Safari will uh, render this just fine. Uh, we can play around with the heart a little bit here um, and some undocumented uh, mouse controls. So right click to just rotate around and then middle mouse button to pan in and out. Oops, sorry. And then we can zoom in and out of any 3D objects by also using the mouse wheel. The majority of either of these two simulators is transthoracic that you see here and the transesophageal are keyboard control because um, fewer and fewer people these days actually have a desktop mouse and I didn't want to have people have to rely on a trackpad in, in order to control the ultrasound planes. So you can either run it in uh, this windowed form here, which is I think 960 by 400, or you can launch it to become full screen. So as you can see here, um, the whole thing is full screen and we can exit out just by using the escape key. But we'll launch this full screen so that you don't have to see my browser uh, behind it. We'll go into the transthoracic simulator first. So because this is a WebGL project, there will be a little bit of lag because the, um, the assets that we use here, the meshes, and the textures are quite large. I've tried to reduce them and optimize them as much as possible, but there's still a little bit of frame rate uh, drops, especially as it begins to cache in your browser. So the first screen that we're presented here are the simulator controls. So as you can see, this is also a 3D scene, and you can play around with it if you, if you really want. Uh, the keys move so that you know which you're supposed to be hitting and we can cycle through it. So this first one was how to move the probe towards the head and away from the head, so towards the feet. A and D for left and right. Q and E to pitch the plane. Uh, up arrow and down arrow to do the whole pitching of the actual probe. Left arrow and right arrow to tilt the probe left and right. And once we're all comfortable with these keyboard controls, I think they're just simulator like uh, video game controls, we can just launch the simulator. And as you can see here, the first scene that we're greeted with is a normal patient's heart. In this top view, we can go ahead and see the di different um, anatomical features, at least on the surface, so that you always know where you are. And on the bottom view is where you're going to be doing the positioning between the ribs, the lungs, the heart, and the person's chest. At any time, you can back out to the instruction screen or to the home screen. And if you ever lose your way, like if you're zoomed in too far, you can reset the camera, and then you can find your way back. We can also turn the ribs on and off, but for the time being, we're going to keep it on just to keep the simulation as realistic as possible. So if we switch here to the keyboard controls, we can see that the probe moves as you would expect in 3D space. And if we actually rotate the chest, uh, you'll see that the probe follows the contours of the body quite smoothly, and it will not fall off. So you can go pretty much wherever you need to in order to do your examination. So we'll reset that and reset the probe as well, and then we can actually start to get into some of the features here. So as you can see, as we pass over the ribs, there is nothing on our ultrasound window on our right-hand side of the screen. Our readings are at zero degrees inferior to superior tilt. Right to left tilt is also at zero, and the beam rotation is at zero. That's because this is, for all intents and purposes, the usual position for the TTE probe in this particular simulator. As we begin to move, however, we can see that there are flashes of um, images on this screen. And those flashes basically indicate that the ultrasound beam is passing through some portion of the person's chest. And this is happening because this ultrasound beam, which is actually producing this image, is being dynamically generated at runtime, and it's being occluded by the ribs and the lungs, as you would expect in a real ultrasound uh, examination. Granted, the shaders aren't up to par just yet, but we're working on it. So as we move forward, we can see what happens if I were to position my probe over the beam or over a pair of ribs here, just like that. It's being cut off here, and it's being cut off by the lungs a little bit uh, towards the left si left hand side of this beam, indicated by the, the blue bar over here. However, if we were to try and get the um, apical four chamber from the parasternal view, we can certainly do that by positioning it between these two ribs, moving the probe over a little bit, as you would in a normal exam, and then angling it up so that you get the four chambers that you actually want. And there it is. And as you can see, our superior to inferior tilt 
right to left tilt, and the beam rotations all change dynamically as well so that you can always position yourself within the heart and know exactly where you are. Perfect. We can then go through and repeat this exercise for all the different uh, ribs and even subcostal will work if I can position this thing correctly. And again, this entire thing is driven by the mouse. Subcostal is a little bit tricky here because this, this is a little notch at the ribs, but it is possible. And then if we were trying to get the long axis view, that is also certainly possible by going through these two ribs in between the ribs and the lungs, positioning it correctly, rotating the beam itself, and then looking for our left eight, or looking for our, our LVOT and our um, left atrium and the mitral valve. So there's a right ventricle, there's your aortic, there's your left ventricle, there's your um, left atria. It's not a perfect view. Uh, it's a little bit better. It's not that bad. Then we can get that. And then we can also get some of the short axis here, which is a little bit more challenging because of the ribs. However, just for comparison's sake, we can actually go through it by removing the, the ribs. And then all the views are once again um, obtainable without any sort of occlusion. So you can see what happens when we do an ultrasound exam without um, any anything occluding it. So we'll reset the probe here. We'll reset the camera. We'll get the ribs and the lungs back in. And then the other feature that we built in is the ability to load different pathologies. So in this case, we are loading the, a the heart with an aortic dissection. And as you can see, it is the full arch this time, it's just to showcase the aortic dissection. And the labels change as such too, so that you can see the ascending aorta, um, the aortic arch over here, and the descending aorta. And I don't know if I labeled the um, aortic dissection here, because I guess you can only see it from the inside. Anyway, we'll reset the camera. We'll move back over and then we'll see if we can identify that aortic dissection. Mm. Oh, there it is. There it went. There it is. So as you can see here, uh, we get the two chambers of the heart, including the aortic dissection throughout the, um, the descending aorta. And we can actually see exactly what structures that we are actually cutting through in the heart when we switch over to this view. And we can toggle on and off between the normal heart and the um, and the pathological heart uh, whenever we want. And again, we can reset the camera and the probe at any time in case we ever get lost. Um, as we continue to develop this program, we will be loading more and more pathological hearts so that people who wish to see what an ultrasound actually looks like uh, with, when dealing with different pathologies are able to do so. Um, and then we'll add more functionality as well to uh, the readouts on the screen, such as um, learning where the positions actually are. So for example, your four chamber view would be down here, your long axis here, and then your short axis up here, um, and cleaning up some of the artifacts and the ribs that are currently present. So now if we go back to the home screen, we can then switch to our transesophageal simulator. And as you can see, it's the same deal. So instead of a TTE probe, we get the head of a TEE probe, and the instructions work the exact same way. We can still play around with it if you really want. Um, so W and S to anti-flex and retroflex re um, the probe's head, respectively. A and D to flex the probe left and right, respectively. Q and E to rotate that beam. Up arrow and down arrow to advance and then, or retreat and then advance that probe. And then left arrow and right arrow to actually simulate what it's like to, to twist the, the, the probe um, while you're doing an exam. And again, the uh, buttons react dynamically, or the animation reacts dynamically. So we'll launch this simulator. And as you can see, there is our standard normal heart. This time we only have two views. Um, the external view, showing the probe in relationship to where the heart actually is. And the ultrasound view with our dynamic UI over here to keep the position of the probe in check. Um, as we go down, we can begin the exam. So there's the pulmonary artery. As we can also see the start of the um, ascending aorta. Go down, going down a little bit further, we get our short axis views, which are completely clean because in this case there's nothing behind the heart. And then we can keep going. And then there's our metasophageal four chamber. Um, the probe head is completely, um, it has been locked so that we only um, can get realistic deformations of the head, so a negative 35 degree angle. It can touch the heart but not go through. We can pitch to a plus 35 to the right, negative 35 to the left. 
and then again, just like the previous one, we can reset the camera and reset the probe. So as we continue to move down past the mid-esophageal views, the probe will turn as if you were heading into the stomach or the fundus of the stomach so that you can do a transgastric view of the heart. So there's a transgastric short axis and we can do a complete um, examination through here as well without going through the heart. And we can uh, retreat the probe and continue to, with our exam to move forward all the way down to a deep transgastric view, uh, which can be a little bit tricky sometimes because of the positioning of this probe. But there it is, so deep transgastric is completely doable. And again, we can see how far we are relative to our start point, the degree of antiflexion that we have in order to attain this view, where we are externally to the heart, uh, how much left to right flexation there is, and again, we can, we, can kind of, we can kind of play with that to get a better view. Probe rotation and the beam rotation. So the beam rotation is basically zero right now, but we can, we can kind of go all the way through if necessary. And then again, we can load the pathological heart, giving us a very clear view of um, what it actually looks like for the long axis, cutting through the uh, descending aorta to see the aortic dissection over here. And we can play with these angles as well. So getting back to deep, deep transgastric if needed, clipping back up, and then we can do a, an, a, a pullback of the probe basically, so that we can go back and uh, do the examination all over again if, if really needed. Uh, so yeah, those are the current features that we have in our free online cardiac ultrasound simulator. Like I said earlier, there's a couple of bugs that I want to work out in the future builds. Making this thing mobile ready is a huge uh, priority for us. And also having more of these uh, pathological hearts for people to play with and actually do the examination on and practice their ultrasound skills on um, is another top priority for us. And we'll be pushing those changes out uh, as we develop them in the coming days. So thank you all for watching this video and enjoy the simulator. Any feedback is greatly appreciated. Um, and uh, we look forward to developing more tools. Thank you.